let's transition to um, one of the more influential trials. It's been so wonderful to be a lung cancer doctor in the past decade because, uh, and certainly recently, as someone pointed out, I think we had six or seven approvals in lung cancer over the past couple of months. It's been a land of plenty and probably more to come as we'll talk about. But one of the more influential trials, and I wanna ask Dr. Liu his, his perspective on this, is the Pacific trial. You know, after we've, we had kind of reached a plateau in terms of what we could achieve for cure rates and survival in, in uh, the chemo, concurrent chemo radiotherapy world, we saw Pacific come along um, and really change the standard of care. Uh, give us your perspective on that. And then, and then you know, do, do you think it's been adopted at the community level? Are most people doing it and, and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I think it's been widely adopted because this is really what we've been waiting for for so long. As a reminder, the Pacific trial was a randomized phase three trial for patients with unresectable stage three non-small cell lung cancer. Patients received definitive <laughs> chemo radiation with platinum-based chemotherapy delivered concurrently. And after completing treatment in the absence of progression, they were randomized to receive dervalimab or placebo for one year. Uh, what we saw initially was a pretty profound improvement in PFS. And at World Lung in 2018, we saw that that did translate to an OS benefit. Uh, the hazard ratio at that point was 0.52 for PFS, 0.68 for survival. Uh, what we saw in the past year was more maturity. And with more follow-up, we saw that survival benefit persists. We don't see a dropping of that tail. That hazard ratio, 0.69, a consistent benefit with delivery of dervalimab. We saw a median survival of 29 months with placebo, not reached with dervalimab, but the three-year survival rate uh, was 57%. Um, and I, I think it's been embraced by, by all of us. This is a space where we deliver a fairly toxic treatment. Chemo radiation is one of the tougher treatments that, that I have to, to coach patients through. And the hope with that treatment is to deliver a cure. But we know that for the majority of patients, we don't achieve that. And, and this gives the potential. The addition of immunotherapy consolidation gives patients the potential for long-term benefit, uh, long-term survival. And I think at first there was some concern about safety. I think that's largely been quelled. Uh, it's, it's a safe drug to give. We don't see very high rates of pneumonitis. There were some who were reluctant to get rid of consolidation chemotherapy, maybe some on this uh, call right now, um, and who instead are maybe giving that as induction therapy. Uh, but now we're, we're very comfortable using dervalimab and it's, it's become a clear standard. One of the, uh, I saw a recent piece of data to suggest, you know, in the trial design of Pacific, uh, we had, you know, 26 doses or, you know, a year of treatment. Uh, but at least some recent uh, market figures suggest that the average patient doesn't get nearly a year of treatment. And so how important is that to, to, to you to think that you, you got to push them through and get the full year in? Well, it's... it's it's one year, which is a nice round number, and, and that means it's it's pretty arbitrary, right? Um, at the 2018 update, if we look really? at the four, yeah, if we yeah. look at the, the 473 patients who received DERVA, uh, only about 232 completed all 12 months. Now, some of the patients will drop off for progression, notably less than the placebo arm, and and some patients uh, will stop due to toxicity. Now, uh, those patients may still derive benefit from DERVA, just may not need to continue therapy. So my general approach is to go for a year, uh, but certainly in the face of toxicity, uh, if I coach patients yeah. through, uh, toxicity resolves, I, I'm probably unlikely to re-challenge someone because uh, it may not be critical to finish that year. So Roy, uh, any reason to check PDL one status in the consideration in this setting? Well, we do, and but normally that will be the PDL one, you know, at the diagnosis and not after the chemo radiation. So all bets are off to what's going on in the tumor microenvironment. We tend to use it on patients regardless of PDL1 status. There were some data, I, I think, early on that suggested you know, lesser effects in low PDL1, um, though um, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much using it in, in all, all groups. Yeah, and, and, and we'll, we'll eventually get to the ADORA trial in this discussion, but that's certainly going to push more frequent molecular testing in early stage disease. Right, right now, we don't really have a defined reason to do molecular testing in stage three, but it's often done. And so you know that people may have a driver. And, and does that influence your use of immunotherapy after chemo radiotherapy, given the questionable uh, data we have, for instance, in an EGFR mutant positive patient? Um, yeah, I, I, it, it might. Although if you look at the uh, Pacific trial, 
there were a, a reasonable number of patients, you know, on the order of 10% or so. 6%, I think, yeah. That had easier for mutations, and that subgroup, albeit small, did well. Um, and uh, so I wouldn't avoid it, though I think we're, we're moving towards a new trial where we'll probably molecularly profile stage three patients, and then based on the results of ADORA, there's a trial called LORA, and LORA is going to be using acimertinib in, in that sort of uh, stage three uh, chemo radiation post setting. I think that might be a very nice thing to do as well. Same, same concerns, you know, the worry about ILD and, and other issues and the effect of uh, an EGFR inhibitor plus uh, an IO agent, but you know, working out some of those you know, timings, I think that would be a very nice thing to study in the future. So, so it, it changed practice, and, and I think I, I agree with you, Dr. Liu. I think uh, people are enthusiastic about it. Everyone loves immunotherapy now nowadays. Uh, 